Kathir is a material fighter developed by Israel based on the Destro Mirage 5 airframe with domestic electronics and engines from the United States. Kathir Block 60 version is assessed as close to the US F-16 fighter. AIA Kafir was considered to be the first break for Israel's military aviation industry in the context of cutting off arms supply from Europe in the 1960s. According to many military analysts, the French arms embargo imposed on Israel in 1967 to prevent the delivery of Mirage 5J fighters that touched Tel Aviv pride created an important promise for Israel to establish a domestic aircraft industry. Initially, the Israelis responded by producing a licensed fighter called the Nessar, with the airframe and engine specifications corrected by the Israeli intelligence agency. Nessar was later developed by Israel airplane industry into Kafir, a man-terror fighter. The Kafir prototype was first flown in 1973, and the Kafir C-2 were put into service as a fighter bomber with the Israeli Air Force in 1975. Compared to its predecessor, the redesigned Kafir with an all-new engine from the United States, the General Electric J-79 jet engine was the same engine used on the Bataner Douglas F4 Phantom II. The Israelis have started buying J-79 from the United States since 1969, along with a production license. Compared to the French Arta 9 engine, the J-79 provides more thrust and consumes less fuel. It provides drive thrust up to 49 kN and an afterburning thrust of 83.4 kN. The Israeli fighter jet can reach a maximum speed of Mark II, a combat range of 768 km, a service ceiling of 17,689 meters, and a rate of climb of 233 meters per second. The overall design of Kfir is quite similar to the French Mirage 5. It is still a tail-to-wing aircraft with a horizontal tail fin. The two main wings are mounted low on the fuselage, with large surface area. The tail-to-wing design gives the aircraft a great lift, but also causes fly instability. Kfir has added a pair of canard wings attached to the front of the main wings to improve handling and provides additional lift at low speeds to the aircraft. However, the innovation of the American J-79 engine required the Kfir to redesign the entire rear fuselage and cooling system. The new forward fuselage has been extended to a Vunix, including the Alta 2001B Raider and new weapons navigation system. Kafir has a long, slender nose. Behind is a single seat cockpit with a two-piece canopy. The pilot has good views on all sides. Just behind the cockpit are the intakes located on either side, shielded by inlet-mounted cones. The tubular fuselage with an ray spy runs from behind the cockpit to the early vertical tail fin at the rear. The edges of the vertical tail fins as well as the main wings are square back. There is also a thin venture fin under the engine exhaust. The Kafir's undercarriage system is a three-wheel arrangement consisting of two main single-wheel landing gear legs and a single-wheel nose leg, or is fully retractable. Kafir is equipped with a pair of Rafael's 30mm DEFA-553 cannons that can be used in both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground rounds, each armed with between 120 and 140 rounds, with up to 9 external hardpoints, 4 under each wing and 1 at the fuselage. Kafir can carry a variety of weapons depending on the mission. Unguided air to ground rockets, including the Matra JL100 rocket pack, each with 19 S and EB 68mm rockets. For air to air missions, Kafir can equip with two AIM 9 side widers or Safro or Python series air to air missiles. 
True Track and True AGM 65 memory anti-radiation missiles. Many types of bombs can be carried such as the Mark 80 series, Pepway series of laser-guided bombs, Briefy laser-guided bombs, SMKB smart bomb, TAL-1 or TAL-2 cluster bombs, BLU-107 material to render reconnaissance posts or drop tanks. The Kafir entered service with the Israeli Air Force in 1975. The role of the Kafir as the Israeli Air Force's primary air superiority assets was short-lived, as the first F-15 Eagle fighters from the United States were delivered to Israel in 1976. The Kafir's first recorded combat action took place on November 9, 1977 during an Israeli airstrike on a training camp at Tel Azia in Lebanon. The early air victory claimed by a Kafir during its service with the Israeli Air Force occurred on June 27, 1979, when the Kafir C-2 shot down a Syrian MiG-21, the early air victory in Israeli service. By the time of the Israeli invasion of southern Lebanon in 1982, the Israeli Air Force was able to use both its F-15 and F-16s for air superiority roles, leaving the Kafirs to carry out an escorted strike missions. Shortly afterwards, our Israeli Air Force C-2s began to be upgraded to C-7 version with enhanced weight performance, making the Kafir more suitable to its new fighter bomber role. During the second half of the 1990s, the Kafirs were withdrawn from active duty in the Israeli Air Force after almost 20 years of continuous service. Since the J-79 turbojet engine is an U.S. design, although manufactured under license in Israel, all export sales of the Kafir are subject to prior approval being granted by the U.S. State Department a fact that has limited the sale of Kafir to foreign nations. Kafir TC-2, a two-seat training version developed from C-2 with an electronic warfare platform. Of the 185 C-2 and TC-2 built, 12 were exported to Ecuador in 1982 and 11 to Colombia in 1988. Ecuador's Kafir clashed with Peruvian fighters in border disputes in 1995. The latest export customer, Sri Lanka, purchased 6 T2 and 2 TC2s from Israel in 1996. The Sri Lankan Air Force Kafir was used in the anti-conflict offensive actions of the Tamil Tiger Rebel Group. Israel Aircraft Industry developed the Kafir 2000 upgrade for export. So far, this fighter jet of Israeli military aviation industry still has quite a lot of vitality when in 2014, Israel planned to restart the production line of Kafir Block 60 to serve the export. My video of AIA Kafir fighter ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again.